ratios and their properties. Right now, we'll just try and see these statements. When we say three numbers, if three numbers A, B, C are in proportion, all right. So, if you know geometric progression, don't use it much here. When you simply say that three numbers are in proportion, it means A by B is equal to B by C. As simple as that. Right? Here, the number in the middle, that B, the number in the middle will always appear twice. And the number that appears twice is called mean proportion. So, B is mean proportion. It is the, it is the name of the quantity, so don't worry much. Mean proportion of A and C. Right? So, the middle number or, or the number which is there in between will be called mean proportion of the numbers at the end. Similarly, this C, this C is third proportion. Now, so when I say third proportion, it will mean third proportion to A and B. Obviously, if you wish, you can say that this A is first proportion, proportion to B and C. Okay. Now, how can the questions be asked? I'll write one question here. Find mean proportion of 16 and 36. Very simple. Right? So, what will you do? You write 16 first, you write 36 in the end, and you write x in the end, assuming x is the mean proportion. Remember, mean proportion is the number in between. So, we have to say that 16, x, and 36 are in proportion. So, once we get this, we can write this relation 16 upon x is equal to x upon 36. Understand once more. When I say find mean proportion of 16 and 36, so we write 16 and 36 in the end, we insert number, number x in between, and we say that uh, they are in proportion. And if they are in proportion, then we can apply the same rule. A upon B is going to be upon C. So in place of A, 16 would come. In place of B, X would come. Because of C, 36 would come. And then you simplify. So we get X into X, 16 into 36. So 16 into 36 is equal to X squared. As you know, 16 is 4 squared, 36 is 6 squared. So X will be equal to 4 into 6, which is 24. So 24 is the, is, is the mean proportion of 16 and 36. All right? But at the same time, if I say, find third proportion to 16 and 36. Now, how do you interpret this? Remember, third proportion should come in the end. So, what do we say? 16, 36 and then y. Then this y would represent the third proportion. And we write this as 16 upon 36 equal to 36 upon y. And if you simplify, you will get the values of y, or value of y, right? So I think this is, from here, y is equal to 36 into 36 divided by 16. So 4, 4 times, 4, 9 times, and 4, 9 times. So we get y is equal to 81. This is the answer. So, try and understand that 24 is the mean proportion of 16 and 36. 81 is third proportion to 16 and 36. Right, so one number we calculated here which was in between 16 and 36 and here one number we are calculating which is after 36 and this we follow this proportionality rule. And suppose in case we, we are asked to find the, the first proportion, you know, I'll, I'll put a small question like this, find first proportion to 16 and 36. How do we go about it? We say, a, 16, 36, they are in proportion. So we say A upon 16 is equal to 16 upon 36. Right? So from here we get A is equal to 16 into 16 by 36. So if there is any cancellation possible, do it. So it is 64 by 9. So A's value is 64 by 9. If at all, this is the question. So please understand that all these three questions are different. Right? Even though the numbers are same, or you can see that all these questions are absolutely different. So this is for three numbers in proportion. So whenever, so so in the in the book or in the exercise, we'll have a couple of more questions on this. You just follow this property, this rule. If this is the statement A, B, C are in proportion, then this is the ratio that has to be done. And, and suppose if the statement is not given, question is simply saying that this is 
or find the mean proportion or find the third proportion or find the first proportion. You make a such, such an order and then accordingly you apply the ratio. What if there are four numbers? So in our question, so this chapter, particularly only for this chapter, the language of the question would be, suppose in case we get four numbers A, B, C, D are in proportion. Right? See, here what we mean to say, we do not mean to say continued proportion. See, understand the difference. If it was continued proportion, okay, if it was continued proportion, the relation would be A upon B equal to B upon C equal to C upon D, right? So, if the situation was of continued proportion, it would be A by B, B by C, C by D. Now, this is same as geometric progression. Here, right now, we are not working on progression. We will do that separately. Okay, so specifically for this situation, if we simply say four numbers and proportion, then we will not consider the continuity. Okay, we will just take A by B equal to C by D. So I will clarify once more, in this chapter, when the questions are for four numbers in proportion, then this is the relation that has to be used. A by B is equal to C by D. Okay, but if it is for continued proportion, even in this chapter, if they use this word, then you use this B by C also. In most of the questions, in, in our situation, all the questions would have this relation only. Okay. For example, if the question says, what must be added to each of 33, 45, 69, 93 to make them in proportion, so that they, they come into in a proportion. What will you do? Understand the question. What must be added to each of these? So if I suppose I say that x is the number to be added, then how do I write the relation? 33 plus x divide by 45 plus x because they are going to become a proportion, right? Now this one 69 plus x and last one 93 plus x. Question is what must be added to make them in proportion? So add x to each one of them. So we get 33 plus x, 45 plus x, 10 plus x, 93 plus x. We will not use the continued proportion thing. We will use this one. Okay. Now if you simplify, you get the answer. Now, you don't need to simplify. I give, in these questions, use the options given. So suppose the options are uh, minus 1, 2, 3, 7. Use the options. If you put x equal to minus 1, this will become 33 minus 1. That is 32. 45 minus 1, 44. And this side will become 69 minus 168 and 93 minus 192. Are these two ratios same? No. You can check this. This is uh, uh, 4, 8 divided by 11. This is not a multiple of 11. This is not a multiple of 8. So simply it is wrong. Okay. So this minus 1 is wrong. If you take 2, if you put 2, this will become 35. This will become 47. Here if you put 2, it will become 71. And this will become 95. Very clearly, this 95 is not dissolved by 47. 47 is a prime number. So this also is wrong. If you put x equal to 3, what will happen? This will become 36 and this, this 45 plus 3 will become 48. This is equal to 69 plus 3 that is 72 and 93 plus 3 that is 96. Now check, this is 12 3s are, 12 4s are, this is 24 3s are, this is 24 4s are, right. So they are equal. So this is the correct situation. You don't need to check 7. So the answer is 3. Trust me, uh, you will never have to require to, uh, you will never be required to do some calculations here. Alright. So, question. What fraction bears, bears the same ratio to 3 by 5 as 2 by 7 bears with? 1 by 2. So what fraction? There is the same ratio to 3 by 5. So suppose that fraction is x. Then x is to 3 by 5 is equal to 2 by 7 is to 1 by 2. This is what the question says. Right? So this can be written as x divided by 3 by 5 is equal to 
2 by 7 divided by 1 by 2. So be careful about the order. It says what fraction? Where is the same ratio to 3 by 5. So x will come at the first position, then 3 by 5. And then 2 by 7 goes to 1 by 2. Let's simplify. So you will get 5x by 3 equal to 4 by 7. So finally from here we get x is equal to 12 by 35. So the required fraction is 12 by 35.